Hi guys. In one of the video uh, warm-ups that I had you guys do, there was a question about the electric field from a ring. It's a question related to the chapter 15 material. And the, the question was, at what distance from the ring does the electric field become a maximum? So <clears throat> I wanted to, to look at that function. It basically, I've graphed it here. Uh, it starts at zero when you're right in the middle of the ring because the electric field from different parts of the ring can all cancel one another out. And as you get farther from the ring in units of the ring's radius, so here you're one radius away at one, notice the field's already dropping. So some folks said that it was when the z was equal to r that you get a maximum, but clearly that's past the maximum. Other folks said, well, it's when the distance from the ring is half. Well, you can see that at half the radius of the ring, um, the field has not yet reached its maximum value. The maximum value is somewhere here in the middle between half of r and, and r. <clears throat> so how do I figure that out? Well, you guys took calculus. You had to take calculus before you could get into this class. So you must know that the, the derivative of the function is its slope. And as you look at this graph, you can see that at the maximum, the slope goes through a zero. So the slope becomes zero at the maximum. So the obvious plan is to calculate the derivative of the function and then um, compute its uh, slope and set the slope equal to zero and solve for the z that makes that slope zero. So the question is, how do I, how do I calculate that derivative? Um, I went ahead and put the document with the uh, expression for the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field along the z-axis from a ring right here on the page. And you can see it's a function of z. So the plan is to write that out as a function of z and then calculate the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, solve for the value of z that, that uh, satisfies that criterion, and then see what it is. Okay, so uh, so let's look at that. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw the function here so we can see how to think about it. It starts at zero, goes up, reaches a maximum somewhere, and then starts to come down. And we know that maximum is somewhere between 0.5r and r, somewhere in there. What is that value of z? Right? So the plan is to uh, write out the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field. I'm going to just copy it from the sheet here. 1 over 4 pi e0. I know there's a q. I know there's a z. I know downstairs it's z squared plus r squared. And this is to the 3 halves power. Okay, It has to be 3 halves in order for the thing to end up. This is uh, to the 1 half power, we have units of distance, but I've got distance upstairs, so distance divided by distance, that would be unitless. So I need two more factors of distance downstairs. So I need two more factors of this product, this thing, so that gives me 3 halves. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and calculate the derivative of the magnitude of E with respect to Z. <clears throat> now one way to make that easier is to rewrite this Let's think of this as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Um, and then I've got a q here. And then it's z. And I'm going to write it as z squared plus r squared to the negative 3 halves. And that way I can use the product rule. I can think of this as two factors. And I can use the product rule to evaluate the derivative with those two factors. So the q over 4 pi epsilon 0, that just is a constant. Then I've got the derivative of z times the second guy. Well, the derivative of z is just 1. So it's 1 times z squared plus r squared to the negative 3 halves. <clears throat> and then I've, got the, and then I've got z times the derivative of that guy. Well, that's going to be minus 3 halves. And then it's going to be z squared plus r squared to the minus 5 halves, because remember when you take a derivative, you've got to take the power down by 1. So negative 3 halves minus 1 is negative 5 halves. And then that all has to be equal to 0. So I'm going to set that equal to 0. You'll notice because it's set equal to 0, the only way this whole thing can be 0 is if the stuff in brackets is 0. That constant doesn't actually matter. Um, it's also true that this 
term has a negative sign, so that means this term and this term have to be equal in magnitude in order for this thing to be satisfied. So what that means is I've got, I'm going to rewrite this one in the, sort of in the old-fashioned way. It's uh, z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves here. Then I'm going to get on this side z times, um, oh wait, I'm not done yet. Uh, I didn't do the chain rule here. I left out the derivative of z squared, which is going to give me a factor of 2z. Yeah, don't forget that. Um, so that's important because that gives me a 2, that 2 and that 2 cancel. And uh, also this is, becomes a z squared. Okay, so that's, and then I get a 3. And then down here I get z squared plus r squared and this is to the 5 halves. Now, here's the thing. Um, I can multiply through on both sides by z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. So let's do that. z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. Here I get z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And that gets rid of uh, three factors of this square root. This side, this left-hand side, just becomes 1. This becomes 3 z squared. And then I just end up with z squared plus r squared downstairs because it's it's z squared plus r squared to the two halves because three halves get cancels there. So it's just z squared plus r squared. And so you can see if I multiply through, I get 3z squared is equal to z squared plus r squared. That means 2z squared must equal r squared. And that means z squared is r squared divided by 2, which means z is plus or minus the square root of r squared over 2, which of course is plus or minus r over the square root of 2. So the answer turns out to be, um, oh, I've got an, sorry, uh, it's z is plus or minus r divided by the square root of 2. I was running into my own video there and I didn't even see it. Okay, I hope you can see that now. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's go back to the uh, regular screen and look at that and see if that makes sense. Uh, if you'll notice, this peak here is about two-fifths of the way uh, between these two lines. That would make it about 0.7, which is uh, 1 over the square root of 2 is 0 0.707, so that actually works pretty well. Um, anyway, I hope that helps explain the answer. The answer turns out to be uh, r divided by the square root of 2. Talk to you soon.